Let them them in the face. I'm more interested in her doing a handstand on the beach in a bikini. Press my d**ks together and now she's a millionaire. Oh, How good is that? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 281 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I'm joined by Rosie as well. Hello. And Bobby's on the floor. Uh, missed last episode. Uh, I'll tell you why later. It's uh, Spoiler alert, it's sad. Um, but I have some really good news, some amazing news, uh, big breakthrough uh, in, in my life. Uh, I'm happy to announce, incredibly proud and excited to say that my front teeth touch. How good is that? Yay. Look at these. They touch. I used to be able to fit my whole fucking thumb in here. You know, like I was some one night stand taking it a bit too far. But they they touch now, which is amazing. What's a shame is that I thought they were gonna I, I thought they were gonna, that's a mental image, isn't it? I thought they were gonna touch um symmetrically, but instead they're touching only down the bottom and not up the top at all. So I have like uh instead of a gap now, I have a, a triangle shaped hole in the middle of my head. And also, what's annoying is uh, my front teeth are clearly moving way faster than the rest of all of the teeth on the top half of my head because I now have gaps on either side of my front teeth and in the middle. So I've gone from having one freakishly huge gap to like a triangle one in the middle and then two on either side. I've got three gaps. So the gaps are multiplying. I'm, I'm well and truly uh, even deeper into my gap year, and uh, it's getting worse. So, you know, I, I'm excited for, for my teeth to, to properly... To, when, my, when my teeth touch symmetrically, it's over for you. You know, I was excited for my teeth to touch. Now, you know what is good? Before, people used to stare uh, into, my, into my mouth whenever they served me at, at cafes or at the supermarket or whatever. Whenever I had an interaction with a stranger... People would stare directly into my mouth through my front teeth. And that was not good, right? Now, I just look like a guy with, with shit teeth that finally has the money to fix them, which I'm happier about instead of some freak show that should have got that shit fixed a, a long time ago. Because it looked like before I had abusive parents who were like, nah, let's, let's let the freak grow up like that. <laughs> look at that little freak with his fucking... Dude looks like a hippopotamus with his two teeth that far apart. Let's send, let's send that little cunt off to school. Good luck making friends, right? Now, I just look like a guy who, who finally got his shit together, you know? Like, after, uh, after a, a many years of heavy drinking and, and a little bit of meth, not heaps, but a little bit, I've finally gotten, gotten back on the, wa- on, on the wagon and uh, I'm fixing my teeth. So that's, that's me. That's my update, and I'm and I'm happy about it. Uh, we're running low on emails, guys. Podcast at lewspears.com. Send through your emails now. We really do need them. I've got one for the end of this episode. If you have any life advice questions, if you, if you want to tell me a funny story, if you want my thoughts on a subject or a topic or a thing, send it through to podcast at lewspears.com. I don't know what's happened with the emails. The podcast is like pretty much the biggest that it's ever been, but the emails are at an all-time low. Do you guys not do email anymore? What's going on? Do we need to set up a fucking Google form? Rose and I were talking about it. We're like, oh, we can set up a Google form. I don't want to check a Google form. What do you What do you want us to do? Send an email if you have one. If you've got a question, like literally you're guaranteed to get in the show. <laughs> what more do you want? I'm taking anything. Uh, what's your favorite color? Look, man, I won't tell you because I need an email about that for me to answer it. Um, yeah, so, uh, my teeth touch and it's a, it's good. Dude, I'm going to have such a nice smile. My dentist told me something that freaked me out. I don't know if I talked about this. He goes, um, just at the end of my appointment when they changed the wire, he goes, oh, just so you know, uh, make sure that you're brushing the gum in between your two teeth. Uh, because after this surgery, there is a small chance of gum recession. Uh, and I was like, oh, no one's ever told me that before. So now I brush my gums. Uh, and I looked up what happens with gum recession. Your teeth just fall out. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, you know, maybe at the end of all of this, I'll have a, I'll have a, the perfect Hollywood sexy smile for about two weeks and they'll fall out. Uh, and it'll be the, the opposite of Bugs Bunny. He's only got his two front teeth. I don't have any. Um, 
But look, man, that's just that's just how it be on this on this bitch of an earth. Um, right. So let's get into some uh, some really important news. So some really important um, global groundbreaking geopolitical news has happened between uh, some very big nations that are currently at war. Okay, I know you know what I'm talking about, but. And I know that everyone's talking about it, but I still think it needs to be spoken about. Okay? A lot of people are throwing their support behind one and hating on the other. And a lot of innocent people are getting caught in the crossfire. And you know what I'm talking about. And that is Addison Ray's parents are having a messy divorce. Publicly on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, 2022 sucks. Okay? We got to watch... Some girl who's famous for being hot uh, and and some chick basically who learned how to dance without moving her feet. That's that's what TikTok is. It's like, oh, I really want to be a dancer, but I, I have to work with a vertical screen here, so I'm just going to move my arms and every now and then I'll press my tits together. And now she's a millionaire. All right? it's It's been done before, but it'll always work. All right? I'm a simple man. I see, I see that, I go, nice, all right? There are many other, even simpler people who see that and go, oh, man, she must have a good personality and be talented and, and I should follow her and maybe buy her perfume or whatever the fuck she sells. What does <laughs> she sell? What does uh, she do? She sells like lip gloss, I think. Lip gloss. Okay, I understand that, okay? She can put on a little bit of lip gloss. Haven't maybe you seen that market? famous video of her, like opening the lip gloss with her mouth? No, but I would up. like to now that you've mentioned it. That sounds great. You I see? can show you. And this is this is the type of art that is being taken away from us, that we're being distracted from, while, because Addison Ray's parents are having a messy divorce on TikTok, okay? It's distracting from the pure art form of Addison Ray doing whatever the fuck this is. Is All this right. her putting on lip gloss with her mouth? I'm more interested in her doing a handstand on the beach in a bikini. Right. Oh, Man. she unlocked it with her mouth. Is she fucking driving too? I would love to just... I would love if that TikTok just ended with her T-boning a family of six in a minivan. <laughs> What the what the fuck is it with Americans and just like TikToking while driving? Mm. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I have. In Australia, we don't really let that happen for the most part, right? I don't think I've ever ever like literally seen an Australian social media person kind of like doing a TikTok while driving. I see that shit every day from Americans, mm -hmm. and what a way to die, you know. To just help some millionaire make a seven-second TikTok so she can sell lip gloss that probably gives people cancer and you were trying to cross the road because you had a green light to cross. You got your little dog, right? And that's how you go out, helping Addison Ray sell lip gloss. Would that get you into Valhalla? If, t if it turns out the Viking gods are real and you have to die in battle? Potentially not. And how upset would you be, you know? You'd be mm -hmm. up, you'd be up there in in uh, in Valhalla and 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 Thor's there and Odin's there, you know. You meet some some guy called called Thorfinn or something, and he's like, "I died pillaging an English town. I killed seven men before they took me down. How did you die?" I was run over by a 19-year-old girl's Range Rover while she did a TikTok and died on the way to hospital. Ah, you can sit on that table. <laughs> and it's with all the other people that were taken out by influencers. You know, one of Ezra Miller's victims is going to make it up there. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, the microphone's fallen off. Right, well, that's going to be the rest of the podcast. All right, I'm back. Okay, so now... Addison Ray's parents are having a messy divorce. And how old is Addison Ray? I think she's like early. She's young, right? She is 21. 21. Younger Great. than me. Younger than you. By like one year. Wow. Where's your Range Rover? 
I know. Huh? You're making, oh, cool, you make little TikToks for a comedian? Great. Why don't you run over someone while you're doing the work? <laughs> Kill them in your car. Um, I, can't, I can't wait for that shit to happen. During a live stream. I, wa- I, wa- like, I want to see James Charles going, hey, sisters, and then I want to hear the screeching of the wheels and someone yelling, stop! And then, and then just news for weeks. Anyway, that might make me a bad person. Um, and so, <laughs> so, so she's 21. How old are her parents? They're having some big, messy divorce. They got to be in their in their fifties, right? Her dad is forty six. Yeah, great. And her mom, her mom, forty two. Forty two. Okay, so they're having some giant messy divorce, and yep. it's all publicly on TikTok. And he's like, what cheated on her, uh, and then people are making TikToks about it. And now they're just having a back and forth beef on TikTok while Addison Ray hasn't posted for like five days. This is the problem when you become famous for doing fuck all. You're not interesting enough for people to only follow you. Like, you know, say what you like about my comedy. No one's following my brother, you know? <laughs> like, no one's like, fuck, this Lewis guy's all right, but I'm, I'm going to need to know. Or maybe, maybe she's more interesting than me. Maybe she's so fucking interesting that people are like, man, God, i got to find out what her mum's up to. Mm. You know? Because her mum has a million followers. I think they actually have a family TikTok account. Oh, that's why. I believe they, they have. They have just cashed in on, on TikTok in the biggest way and now they're paying the price for it. This yeah. really is the price of being famous for nothing is that – Whenever anything remotely interesting happens in in your life, people have to care about it because you can't distract them with something good, you know? Yeah, the Ray family has 6.2 million followers because she also had... (laughs) What is that account posting now while they're going through a messy divorce? Do they all get like one post every... One post a day each, you know? Oh, so now they're posting the stuff from her Snapchat original series where she goes back to her, like, hometown. Okay, so they're just, like, recycling old content. I I don't like that. What I think they should be doing is I reckon that they should, just like with the kids, have shared custody of the TikTok account. And, you know, maybe Dad gets it on weekends. So Monday to Friday, Mum and the kids are posting what they're up to. So oh, I'm make, I'm making cupcakes with my two little boys, uh, and mm. then we're gonna we're gonna see who makes the best looking cupcake monster, and then on Fridays uh, it's just dad and he didn't pick up the kids and he's just drinking alone in the bath, no water in it, and he's just going, oh, I fucking she fucking missed out on on a good thing, fucking whores. They don't know what they they don't know good when they see it. And then back on Monday, it's like, all right, it's Monday. I'm taking the kids to school. And and then on Wednesday, it's they're filming outside the window, and Dad's rocked up and goes, "What? It's fucking Saturday. It's my turn to see the kids. Like it's Wednesday. Go home, Marty. What's his name? Marty. Monty. Monty. That's a dog's name. So they they've split up because Monty's cheating on her or is it just a normal divorce as you've read into this a lot more than i have yeah from what i can tell they're not sure if they were like divorced when this happened but they were going through like a breakup so they're not sure if it's like classified as cheating but this video on tiktok went viral of her of him obviously hitting on a younger girl nice and i can play it Monty's midlife crisis is coming in. I'm fucking right now. What? I have to raise dad is trying to fuck me. I swear to God. Dude, you can't. Man, check out the body language. That's, imagine, I mean, yeah, you can't be hitting on women your daughter's age when your daughter is one of the most famous women on the planet. No way. You know, she probably follows her. <laughs> she's, you know, she's probably wearing the lip gloss 
You don't want to be kissing that girl and go, mm, it smells familiar. <laughs> you don't want to get nostalgic, you know, to, to a moment when you were really proud of your daughter for launching a lip gloss and you smelled it. You're like, oh, it smells really nice. And, and then you're just drunk and lonely. You kiss some girl. And it smells like your daughter, and you're like, "What have What have I done? I've ruined everything. My <laughs> uh, life's ruined. Ew. This is not good." <laughs> no. This is This is why you know. Every now and then, I'll see really famous dudes uh, having sex with prostitutes, and I'll be like, "What are they doing that for?" This is why. <laughs> this is why, because if you hit on someone, when, even when you are single and you're that famous, someone's going to make a TikTok about. You trying to fuck him and it's going to get a million views. Mm-hmm. And that's why Addison Ray's dad is the real victim in this for cheating on his wife. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, so that's what Addison Ray's dad has been up to, is going through a midlife crisis, hitting on girls his daughter's age uh, and getting just embarrassed for it. What's Addison Ray's mum up to? Like, what's her TikTok looking like? Uh, surely she's just, you know crying herself to sleep every night, uh, just drinking herself into a coma, probably looks terrible. What's she been up to? Yeah, so close but not quite. Okay. In her bio, it now says professional dancer and single mum. Right. So she is advertising that she is very single and she is posting thirst traps almost every day. Okay, so she's she's in the middle of her MILF era while while her ex-husband is getting rejected and embarrassed by women he hits on in nightclubs he's far too old to be in. Mm-hmm. His ex-wife is just going, check out my new tits, I'm I'm a dancer. That I mean, look, that's a lie. You know she's, is, who's paying her to dance? Is she Honestly. a professional dancer? I don't see much dancing going on on this TikTok. I'm seeing a lot of uh a lot of sundress, you know, hot mum activities here. I'm not seeing a lot of dancing. Mm. Yeah, every single video is just her going, look, I'm hot. Right? Yeah. Now, while this is all happening, this is where we get to the interesting part. Now Young Gravy is getting involved. Now, if, you, if you're <laughs> unaware, Young Gravy is uh, he's like a, a – he's like a – Less funny, more serious little dicky is how I would describe his music. It's not mm. entirely comedy, but it's also not entirely serious either. It's very tongue-in-cheek, but I wouldn't call it comedy rap. He's huge, right? And he has a running joke on his thing about being a MILF hunter, where he's always tracking down MILFs. He's not interested in his fans. He's interested in their mums. Quite funny, right? And it's gone so viral to the point where... Girls are now making TikToks with their single mums going, I know you don't like me, but check out my mum, right? Mm. And he's just out there on a fucking rampage, absolutely crushing, uh, you know, midlife pussy. Now, obviously, this breakup has gone huge, so he's capitalised on the trend and made a joking TikTok about, oh, great, Addison Ray's mum is single, let's do this thing. Uh, Quite clearly a joke. Mum's responded, however. We got a TikTok from Mum there. Yep. Back in America. I'm looking to make some whoopee, you feel me? I'm trying to butter the biscuit. Now, if I was Addison Ray. I would drive to my mother's house, take her phone and throw it into the fucking sea. Okay? And I would say, Mum, I'm f- you're in a mansion because I dance and understood a new TikTok. You're not allowed to publicly advertise to the world that you're going to fuck some dude my age. Yeah. Sorry, Mum. Them's the rules. I think Addison Ray needs to step up here and take her fucking parents' phones away and throw them into the sea. Dad, if you must fuck young whores, pay for it. Don't go to a nightclub. Doesn't matter if you're famous because I am. No one's going to fuck you. Stop Mm. embarrassing me. Dude, if I was her, I'd be pulling my hair out. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh next week we see paparazzi photos of Addison Ray and she looks like she's Smeagol on top. You know, just <laughs> ripping her hair out, watching her dad's sad TikToks. 
and her mum's desperately horny TikToks. Mm. By the way she's posting, it looks like she hasn't been fucked for a decade. <laughs> it's time, call it, mum, all right? It's time to relax. Make, you know what? Make some dancing TikToks. Do that. Mm. <laughs> but if it couldn't get worse for poor Addison, that TikTok, his, her dad has responded to, right? Yep. And now he wants to fight Young Gravy. <laughs> yep. Because his ex-wife wants to fuck this young rapper, he now wants to fight the dude. Mm-hmm. And that's when we get TikToks like this. Can I get a... Is this a thirst trap? What is this? He's flexing his... And then he's, he stood up like, we should be intimidated. Could you fucking imagine your dad like taking his shirt off and setting up a camera on the phone tripod already if i saw my dad setting up his phone on a phone tripod mm. i reckon i would i would file to be emancipated from him <laughs> you know if, if if you if you get home and your dad's got a little desk tripod for his phone it might be time to take yourself down to an orphanage that shit's fucking embarrassing but if he then took his shirt off, <laughs> you might have to get the gun because you can't let him post that. It's no not way. good. No way. That's going to be the most embarrassing shit ever. But incredibly entertaining for us. This is good. And this is just, you know, this is the new royal family. The The Addison Ray family is just losing their fucking minds. And because of all this, she hasn't posted for five days because mm-hmm. you know she's terrified of the comments. If there's mm-hmm. anything I've learned from seeing a, a mentally disabled person's comment section on TikTok, it is those kids have no soul and they will destroy you for fun, all right? Because they're, they're evil little gremlin cunts. <laughs> so he now wants to fight Young Gravy and uh, this is going to be the worst. Could you imagine, like, you divorce your husband who you've had children with who... You know, a small part of you will always love him. And then you see that video and you're like, no, nah, never mind, it's gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to, you're going to have to take the L here. This is not good. And now no. he's beefing with Tana Mojo about how many people she's had sex with because she commented some shit yeah. underneath that. And now they're beefing and he's she's talking about, oh, I'm being slut shamed by Addison Ray's dad. And this is just the, the downfall of Western society. Like in real time, we can just watch why America is no longer a superpower happen right now. And it's because of this, you know, right now, millions and millions of people are, are enthralled with this. While all around these people making these TikToks, homeless cunts are dying in the street of overdoses. <laughs> And and this and this dad's ta- millionaire dad's taking his shirt off and flexing to a TikTok sound, trying to fight some twenty two year old who's going to fuck his wife. How about so this podcast bad. clip from from Young Gravy, who I think is the real winner in this because not only is he going incredibly viral for all of this, he also gets to have sex with Addison Ray's mother. Right at the top there, the second one. The third one, that one. Now this stuff with Addison Ray's mom came about. Mm-hmm. Is that real or is that a meme? It's real. Really? It's real. It's real. Interesting. She's, she's recently single. Oh We're going on a date soon. The only thing is that she lives in Louisiana. Let's picture your first date with Addison Ray's mom. Something real, real classy. I might need some some recommendations in uh in New Orleans, but you know, we go we go down to the beach. You know, they got they got some water there. Yeah, they got those swamps. They got a waterfront. You get one of those wind boats. Yeah. With your shirt all opened up. Driving the boat, the wind blowing. Yeah, hair. man. Go down to the swamp, you know, do a little catfishing, you know. What I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. What do they man. got? Crawfish or crawfish, something? Crawfish, you know, we do a little private grill up. Yeah, hey, you get all crawfish. messy. It'll be sweaty. I bet it'll be real sweaty. All you right. Know? That's that's great. That is that is really good. That uh could you imagine your mom just like flirting back and forth online with this dude talking about fucking her? What does that have? Like 27 million views? 
Uh, or, am I, or am I blind? It's all got millions of views. All of this shit. Incredible stuff. <laughs> oh, man. So, look. This is why China takes over in the end. It's, it's why, you know? This is why I think that we need to start in, in Australia learning Chinese. Because mm. do you think with all of this shit happening that America is going to be in any position to help us in 10 years when China starts taking over? No. Absolutely not. We need to start learning Chinese. You know, I'm, you know I'm, and I'm saying this for your benefit because let's be honest, I'm probably too tall to live in the new Chinese empire. All right? Rosie will be fine. She's small. She's got black hair. She'll blend in. <laughs> Me, it's not going to be good for me. So I'm trying to look out for everyone who listens to the show and everyone who, you know, I've made too many jokes about the CCP in my time. I, you know, I'm going to have to delete everything, but they're still going to find it because i got TikTok, so they got access to everything I've ever done on my phone, right? So they already know that I'm on the hit list. I'm, I'm not going to be number one, but a couple of years into the regime, they'll, they'll find me and they'll go, oh, you, you know, you, you were speeding three days ago. And I'll go, well, I don't have a car. They go, no, no, you walk too quick. And I'd be taken off to the gulag. So I understand, all right? But I'm trying to protect everyone else. You see this shit happening on our TikTok? Meanwhile, on Chinese TikTok, the shit that goes viral is like kids doing push-ups and calculus. It's over for us, and we deserve it. Um, Will Smith has apologized. All right? I did say that, yes. Will Smith has apologized, which I'm excited about because uh, we have tickets to Chris Rock this week. Mm -hmm. which is going to be fun. I mean, he's not going to talk about it. He's been doing shows and shows and shows. He came out recently, or a couple months ago he came out because everyone was expecting him to make jokes about it, and he was like, <laughs> no, I will only talk about this for a streaming service who pays me uh, millions of dollars. And I really, really like that. I think that's good. Mm -hmm. I actually think I'm going to do that with my teeth. Like, when you come and see me, if you want to see my teeth, it's going to cost you an extra $100 if you don't pay the $100 per ticket, the whole audience has to pay it. I'm wearing a mouth guard for the entire show. And some people will be thinking, won't that affect his speech? And I'll say, you've already bought a ticket to affected speech. <laughs> it's going to be pretty similar. Um, but Will Smith has apologised and he, he put out like this giant, like 20 minute long video of him responding to questions that, I don't know who is asking him. So it was like weirdly manufactured. His wife was not there. And he said all this stuff like, oh, you know, I've reached out to Chris and Chris is not ready to speak to me and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, bro, why the fuck are you apologizing now? I forgot that even happened. Mm. Before his apology, if you told me that Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars, I would be like, what's the Oscars? When did, who, did that happen? I forgot about that shit. Two weeks after it happened, okay? I'm, I'm too busy thinking about Addison Ray's parents having a messy divorce, right? And then both fucking young people with varying degrees of success, all right? I don't know. I think Will Smith should have just left it and ignored it and then come back with a cool movie and he'd be fine. Instead, he's making some weird fake apology that no one cares about no one really wants. Mm. It is such a weird thing as well of it being so late. Maybe it's just still like really negatively affecting him behind the scenes. Oh yeah, like he fucked up doing that. Or maybe his really wife badly. just thought it would be funny to make him do it at that point. Like she, she, she monitors. She's like, all right, everyone's forgotten that I made him slap Will Smith, Lip Chris Rock. Let's remind them all. Did they ever talk about it on their Red Table Talk show? I think she did, uh, but she was really weird about it. Uh, and ver and she was un unapologetic. I think uh, his son was like, yeah, that's how we do it in the Smith family. And everyone was like, dude, uh, your, your mum fucked your friend while he was just recovering from a drug addiction. <laughs> Is that how you guys do it? We're the Smiths. You know, come for the hospitality, stay for the pussy. And people were like, wait, which pussy? Will Smith or... I just think it's a fucking weird time to apologize for that. Because mm. he goes, um, oh, why didn't I apologize in my acceptance speech? And then uh, he goes, oh, everything was a blur. It was a blur. I barely remember it. Everything was fuzzy. And it's like, I don't know, man. In your acceptance speech, you talked about protecting your family. Like he justified it in his speech. 
It wasn't like he went up and did his speech that he wrote the week before that had nothing to do with his family. He went up and was like, yeah, I played a guy that protects his family from jokes, not from other dudes trying to fuck my wife, just from jokes. I don't know. This shit's like just very embarrassing and weird. Weird, weird downfall for Will. Good on him. Ladies and gentlemen, you guessed it. This episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping the Lawnmower 4.0, the best personal groomer in the game. Not only do they have an incredible personal groomer slash beard trimmer, uh, they also have... Uh, they also have uh, this. For once your downstairs weeds are taken care of, look after the rest with Manscaped's liquid formulations. Before heading outside, use the Crop Preserver TM Bald Deodorant to stay cool in the heat. Uh, you, you, ever, you ever leave the house 20 minutes later and get a whiff of your own balls? Yuck! That's why we have the Crop Preserver Bald Deodorant with a soothing aloe vera formula. It's the best in the business for below-the-waist freshness. This clear, drying formula will keep you in tip-top shape even at the hottest barbecue. Mate, if there's one thing that I've always thought when I go to a barbecue, it's what's that smell? Oh, it's my taint. Thanks to Manscaped.com, that doesn't happen to me anymore. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. They're really great products, stuff that I use very regularly, and I highly recommend them. So use code SPEARS at Manscaped.com. Let's get back to the show. I don't have anything to talk about from this week because it's been an incredibly sad week for me. So all I really have is like what fucked things celebrities and influencers have been up to, you know? All I have is a very, very sad week about my my childhood dog being put down. I don't, I'm, and then and then I'm like, oh, maybe I should break it up a little bit here, but I don't want to get into that. So we have Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller's in the news, right? And I love Ezra because I just think this dude or this person. See, why can't we have a cool non-binary term for people? Dude, chick, guy, girl. They don't really have a good one. A nice slang term. Envy. I hate that one. That one sucks. Mm. I don't want to say envy. Do people actually use that, envy? You use that? No. I Envy is like non-binary. Envy. But then I'm an NB. I'm an NB. Oh. It's too childlike for me. I'm not going to say it. I refuse. This person is Cobber, gender neutral. This Cobber. Uh, yeah, look, Ezra Miller, star of The Flash, Fantastic Beast, Justice League. What a resume to go before the rest of the headline. Charged <laughs> with felony burglary in Vermont. The fuck is he doing in Vermont? Ezra Miller's flying around the country to commit petty crimes. Wasn't he fucking arrested in Hawaii recently? And then he was mm-hmm. on a farm with some chick that he uh, supposedly been grooming since he was 12, according to her parents? Yep. And now he's in fucking Vermont breaking into people's homes. Can you make the text bigger here so I can read through? I love, I love Ezra because I reckon he's or they're just trying to... Uh, they're really just trying to see how much they can get away with before Warner Brothers will cancel The Flash. And, the dude, The Flash has got to be incredible because the Warner Brothers just cancelled, like, six films, a bunch of TV series, but they're sticking with The Flash. So if bad. If Batgirl gets cancelled before it's even released, even though it's finished, The Flash is going to be incredible because Ezra Miller is out here grooming chicks, breaking into homes, punching on with fans at bars, and they're like, yep, we're putting out The Flash. It's going to be a cinematic masterpiece. It's going to be one of the best superhero films in the world. Vermont State Police said they responded to a burglary complaint in Stanford on May 1st, discovering several bottles of alcohol were taken from a home where the owners weren't there. Ezra Miller was charged after police looked at surveillance footage and interviewed witnesses. Uh, Obviously, there was nothing on the cameras and witnesses just reported a a strong gust of wind going in and out of the door. 
because he's the Flash. The police report the 29-year-old actor was located shortly before midnight and ordered to appear in Vermont Superior Court September 28. The felony charge added to Miller's mounting legal woes and reports of erratic behavior. <clears throat> That's incredible. I mean, what is what is what are they doing? Trying to break into homes to steal wine. <laughs> I think they're just doing it for fun. Right, which I think is is a is a pretty good benefit of being unfathomably rich, is that you can just, you know, fly around. Oh, this house looks empty. I would like a wine. Break in. You get arrested. You pay your bail. No worries. Let's jet set onto another country. Maybe I'll throw a rock through a window, in Texas. You wouldn't do that there. You get shot. <laughs> All right. They were arrested twice earlier this year in Hawaii for disorderly conduct and harassment at a karaoke bar. The second incident was for second-degree assault. And then the parents of a 19-year-old girl, Iron Eye, Dakota Iron Eyes, a Native American activist, filed a protection order against Miller. The teen's parents accused the, the actor of grooming their child and other inappropriate behavior with her as a minor from the age of 12. And they're still the flash is going to be so good. The Flash is going to be... If you can, like, kidnap a 12-year-old and live with her on a farm and still have your movie be put out, it's going to be fucking great. You know, it's going to be a really, really good movie. It's Will you like go the, see it in the cinemas, Lewis? I mean, we're going to have to go and see it. We'll make it a work trip. We have to, you know? It's going to be the ignition of movies. <laughs> so bad. So, so bad. Man. What happens next? Because I never, I wouldn't, uh, at the last time we talked about Ezra, I wouldn't have gone, oh yeah, they're going to be in Vermont robbing houses of wine. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't have been my next guess. So where, where's it going to be from now? I I reckon this, I think this naturally just goes into cult. Although they were kind of in cult, you know, hanging out with someone else's kid. The parents are furious. She's saying, no, 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 nothing's going on. It's perfectly normal for a, let me do the math, a 22-year-old to be talking to 12-year-old me and then for me to live with them when they're 29 and I'm 18. That's totally above board and all good. No worries. So I was thinking it was going cult, but now it seems like they've left the cult and they're just breaking into homes in Vermont. That's like just a petty teenage activity. Mm. So, you know... Maybe the next one could be like um, terrorist attack, you know, suicide bombing, something like that. If we're going left of field, or could just be like a complete one hundred and eighty, and they could become like a priest, or it could be both, because that has, sometimes happens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ezra, whatever, whatever that, whatever may be in 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 front of in front of them. Hopefully, it's not pedestrians. But whatever they have going on next, I wish them the best of luck. And and you know, whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be entertaining. And the and the Flash is going to be great. It's going to be the best film Warner Brothers has ever released. If they're sticking with this with this person, it's going to be the fucking best film ever. I can't wait. I can't wait to sit, be sitting there in the cinema with my large popcorn and coke. Watching The Flash and going, I can't believe that person burned down an orphanage with kids inside and they still released it. I can't believe it. Are they going to get him to go to the premiere? Oh, surely not. This is all, this, I, but I then cannot also wait. you can't release a film without having him there. That's like... Having who there? I can't wait uh, for the fucking <laughs> premiere. <laughs> Oh, gosh. The non-binary shit's difficult. It's hard. Yeah. Trans is easy. You're she, you're he, no worries. I can do that one. The non-binary one is very difficult. It's much more intentional. I have to go... that Because the problem is there's not enough synonyms for they. That's the biggest problem. I can go girl, chick, woman, lady. There's yeah. even There's even horse, slut, bitch. You know, there's even like several negative synonyms 
for either gender. Man, dude, bro, guy, cunt, fuckwit, dickhead. Mm. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I I don't know. What do they call a non-binary person who's pissing me off? And annoying. Annoying. You know. Yeah, Can't call them a bitch because that's mean, but also, uh, um, trans. It's not transphobic, is it? I don't mm, know what it is. I don't know. Bigoted. All right. This is see. I think that non-binary people will really be accepted in, in a language way, in an easy way, when we come up with like a bunch of positive and negative words to call them. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not talking slurs, right? Because I wouldn't say that bitch is a slur. Mm. Or, ma- or maybe I'm wrong. You know what? <laughs> I wouldn't know. Rosie, that's not my word to say. It's your word. Okay? Right. Okay. Well, Ezra being at the premiere, I don't know about that. I think, that's, then I I think that would be funny. How they could not do the premiere without Ezra. I want to see – fuck the premiere. I want to see a press tour. I, oh. <laughs> I, want, to see them, I want to see them sitting yeah. next to their co-star who's, like, incredibly uncomfortable and like terrified. Like going to, like, Comic-Con and all yeah. that. Getting photos with fans. Yeah, that would be – that's what Gosh. I want to see. Because, yeah, they're going to have to – I don't know. I reckon – you know how the Flash film is going to end? It's going to mm. end and then, then credits will – there'll just be texts that say, Barry Allen then died. <laughs> yeah. But it's yeah. okay because his twin his his brother a strange brother who he never spoke to or, or referenced in the film stepped up and assumed the mantle of the Flash. Coming soon in a theater to a theater near you, Flash Two. Less less psychosis edition. Mm. That's how I would end it. Yeah. I can't wait. It's gonna be just cinematic I mastery. Uh, I don't know. Is there a release date yet for that? Next year, isn't it? I think it's next year. So yeah, it, you know, Ezra has a lot more, a lot more controversies to to come about. If I was the CEO of Warner Brothers, I would just have Ezra kidnapped, and I would just put them in a in a nice hotel, right? And it'd be great. It'd be beautiful. There'd be, you know, what I would I would just put them in like a village full of actors mm. and and every day every actor will be told your job is to make sure the flash movie comes out and they've all they all got an advanced screening because as we know it's the best film of all time if they're mm. still releasing the flash it's the best movie ever made and everyone working there knows that their only job is to make sure that the flash gets released and they've all seen it and they all know that it's that it's better than it's better than Titanic. It's better than uh, other critically acclaimed films that I can't name off the top of my head. It's better than all of them. And they know that the world needs to see The Flash because it'll change the world and create a utopia. So their job every day is to wake up and when Ezra Miller comes into their store wearing a tutu and a paper bag mask, their job is to let him, let them slap them in the face mm-hmm. and say, and pretend to call the police. But really they call other actors that address the police. And then Ezra gets to be arrested and have their crazy little rant. And then they Photoshop little articles about Ezra causing a ruckus and email it to Ezra. And he wakes up in a fake police cell and they just create a whole new alternate reality where Ezra gets to rock up. You know, there'll be a few like uh, 18 year old women that look like they're 12. They'll allow themselves to be kidnapped and they'll go, no. Stop! I want to see my parents, and and then and then other actors as the parents will show up and go, "Hey Ezra, give me back my child," and 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 Ezra will go, "No, they're not your child anymore. They hate you," and then they'd walk away and they'd have a fake court case and they would just live in this constructed fake reality, all for Ezra's benefit to make sure that the Flash gets released to the rest of the world because the movie need, the the world needs this film. And I think it would be worth the money. Mm. And if Warner Brothers are listening, I'll orchestrate this fake reality. All right? Let's Truman <laughs> show this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can release a Netflix documentary about it. We can sell that. Mm. You know? 
And then when the movie does come out, and obviously it's the highest grossing film of all time, we just let Ezra out into the world and forever we then get to watch Ezra insist that that world was a real world and the world that we're in now is fake. Mm. And I think that would be fun. It would be. So uh, I uh, obviously missed the episode last week. Uh, I missed the episode because uh, we uh, very unfortunately had to put down um, the family dog, Olive, uh, who I had uh, since 2008. She was 14 and a half, best dog I ever had. Um, And I think that it was, uh, I just, I needed the whole week off because I wanted to give her like uh, an amazing last week. Uh, And I feel very, very uh, blessed that I was able to do that um, because, you know, my my dad has to go to work and my brother has to go to work and so does so does mum. Uh, I'm I'm lucky to be in a position where I could kind of do that uh, for her, where we'd filmed enough stuff and it wasn't ideal. Obviously, we missed out on the podcast, but I was like, you know what? This is more important for her. So yeah, we knew it was her last week. Um, and uh, yeah, I just got to do everything everything that i wanted to do with her we did i took her to the park for the last time uh she wasn't alone at all for the the five days uh i got to i went to the supermarket and i cooked her like steak and fed that to her she loved that um everyone who who knew her like came over and visited because you know my house at home has been like a almost a halfway house for a few people you know like uh uh, other people have lived there when they've been kicked out of home for a couple of years and, you know, it's happened a lot and, uh, you know, young kids who have kind of been taken under under wings, like, you know, I'm I'm kind of, I'm fostering uh, Jasmine's little brother at the moment and he met her and bonded with her. He came over and visited. My my brother is, is uh, looking after a kid and she was there and, uh, yeah, like like everyone who the dog kind of had like a significant impact on uh, came over and visited and paid their respects. And it was just a, a, a beautiful, terrible, sad, lovely week uh, with me and my dog. And I think that it was, you know, I just uh, <clears throat> couldn't really do much because it was so hard for me. Because I feel like the the love that you have for a, a dog that you got as a kid is different, you know, because you don't... I love the, I love this dog, Bobby, but she annoys me a lot. Because I, it's, 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 she's my problem. Do you know what I mean? Like I love it. At, I love it a bit, and she's beautiful, but uh, she's not perfect, and I know that. Do you know what I mean? You don't know that as a kid when you don't have to feed them, you don't have to pick up their shit, you don't have to look after them. Really, you only just have their company and their love, and you don't have any of the problems or the vet bills or the food or the or the any anything. I had like a boy's love for this dog. You know, just like a simple, naive boy's love, uh, and it was really, really difficult for me to uh, to to let her go. I was a fucking mess. I think it's also because I didn't live there for like three years, so I didn't see like the decline. Uh, mm. It wasn't like obvious to me because I think like you know my dad and my brother and my mom they all had time to kind of you get to grieve a pet. Because you make the decision. You choose the day they go. And you choose that because you've seen, you know, months or weeks of them not enjoying life anymore. And I didn't get that. I just got a call from dad. Like, all right, it's time to go. Um, so <clears throat> I went over straight away and I just spent the week with her. And it was it was lovely. Um, and, uh, yeah, we just, we, we, we had, it was time to let her go. She wasn't having fun. It was really difficult because she was so happy. Um, that's what was hard about it is she was e- even through all of her pain, she couldn't really stand up. She couldn't walk around a lot. She would, st- she started to skip meals, but she was just happy. Um, but you know, you have to, that's the moment where you have to do it, where you know that that won't last, I guess, where she might be happy now, but you know, next week or the next day she might fall over and then that'll stop and it'll only be pain. So, you know, <clears throat> it was really tough and uh, it, it made me very sad and I am uh, was crying all week and every now and then I feel good now, but every now and then I'll still cry. Um, and, uh, but it was it was the right thing to do. And I think that, I, I know I've, I've talked about this 
the last time I had to um, let a dog go years ago, Gideon, some, this is when the podcast was smaller, during radio days I talked about it. <clears throat> and um, I said that you, sh and I'll say it again, you should be there at the very, very end. Um, you should go, you should uh, go to the vet and, and be there because a lot of people are too scared of it and they, do, they let their dog go in alone or they take them to the vet and they wait outside because it's too hard and heartbreaking. But I would say, I would like to say again that it's probably one of the most beautiful things you can do for an animal and it's really sad and it's really hard but it's also like amazing and beautiful and you can to be there all the way up to the very end. Um, and what I got to see was right at the very, very end, It was there was a little moment where where she was still there, but the pain wasn't. And I, I just got to see her, like, relax, and she wasn't holding herself, like, a, and her, her back and her legs and everything. I just saw her, like, relax. And it was really beautiful. So I would say, if you're scared of it, don't be because it's the sad memory becomes a beautiful memory and it becomes a happy memory and it's a good thing f to do for them. Um, and what, wh what I would do differently maybe <clears throat> is I would, I would do it at home. Vets will come over and do it at, at your home and I would do it there. She was fine because, you know, she would always leave the house and everything and she would, she was a work dog for dad. So she was never scared in other environments, but a lot of animals don't like the vet. So if you have a dog like that, uh, or even any dog, if you can afford to get the call out, I would do it like that. I think that would be nicer. But otherwise, it was like a, it was like a, p a perfect week for her um, and me. And I'm, I'm going to miss her a lot. But I appreciate everyone's kind words. Lots of people are sending me messages and texts and, and calls and all that kind of stuff. And that's very, very nice. And I'm, and that, but that's why we, uh, we missed an episode, because I just needed that, that week with my girl. Um, cool. So I'm okay. I'm doing better. I wouldn't have been able to tell that story a couple of da couple of days ago. And every 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 sad memory is is slowly becoming a really happy movie, uh, memory. Uh, sorry, I said happy movie. I was thinking about the Flash. Um, <laughs> one thing that I'm really also really happy that I did, and this is something that I that I did not do with my previous dog, because I'm now an expert at putting dogs down. Um, one thing that I'm really, really happy that I did is because uh, I had the, the week with her, but you could probably do this over a few months if you wanted. When you know that, that, that they're, they're going to go, um, I just like filmed her a lot, um, which I never did because I've, I've never, I'm never like, a, I rarely like to pull out my camera and film moments and stuff like that. But what I did was I filmed her heaps, like when no one else was around, when she was sleeping when I was holding her, um, when we were at the park. Um, I just filmed her and now I can watch them. Oh, I can't watch them now because they make me too sad. But I have like, you know, two minute long videos of her just sleeping and breathing and birds in the background that I can go back and watch and remember her with. And it's uh, something that, that I think is, is almost like a gift to me when I'll be able to watch it. Um, so yeah, I would do that, uh, and yeah, I think I'll I think I'll I'll end the podcast there on that incredibly happy note. Um, but yes, yeah, I'm okay. I'm I'm doing all right. I've got I've got uh, a lot of love at home, and I and you know, even like Jazz knew her for ten years, um, so I've still got one redhead left. Out now on Patreon. She can handle herself. Look at her. Going oh wow, moving up in the world, Lewis. You got a. I can't fucking squat like 85 kilos with my ass on the ground. Thank you very much for, for listening and watching. And uh, I do need some emails. Podcast at loosebeers.com. Send it through. And uh, yeah, tickets are selling out very fast as well. Um, I think Adelaide just show, sold out. We added another show. Uh, the two Sydney ones are almost full. There's a bunch of shows that are almost full. So get your tickets now. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you for all the kind words. I'm okay. I'll talk to you guys next week. Uh, unless she gets hit by a car or something. All right. <laughs> Bye.